Welcome back. Have you ever wondered how the top tier gaming talents of the world are able to aim so incredibly well in every combat scenario? If you ever watch a streamer that's very, very good at a shooter, and every time they see a target, they suddenly acquire it, shoot straight at the head and get the headshot. Everyone likes seeing the montages. Everyone likes seeing the amazing flick shots, but that's not done purely through thought. That is a trained and learnable reaction when you're in a combat scenario. Have you ever gotten to your car after work and driven home without even realizing you got home? It's because you were on autopilot. Today, you're gonna learn how to turn on perfectly legal auto-aim using your body. We're gonna talk about several drills you can run every day before playing that take no longer than 10 minutes. And doing this every single day, you will see drastic improvements in your aim in a very short period of time until suddenly you are the god of aiming. Now, most games involve a lot of action with your prefrontal cortex, a lot of cognitive and critical thinking. But shooters are actually very, very physical. In fact, because action happens so, so quickly in shooting games, a lot of times it comes down to muscle memory. Many of the best FPS and TPS players in the history of gaming spent a lot of time scrimming, practicing, and running drills. Just like top athletes around the world in sports, football, soccer, baseball, you name it. Spending time making sure you train up your muscle memory as well as your reaction speed will mean that you can win that fight. Take a tip from Hunter Hunter Killua's Godspeed or Goku from Dragon Ball Super's Ultra Instinct. In both cases, these characters improved their speed by removing the need to process information in their brain. They are now relying on instinct and reflexes to speed up their reaction time. And this is actually backed by science. The average person, when responding to a stimuli, when they have to process in their brain, can take upwards of 0.3 or 0.4 seconds to react. This includes seeing the stimuli, processing the information, sending that response to the central nervous system and down to the motor neurons in your hands or feet can take upwards of 0.3 or 0.4 seconds. Now, for those that are interested, I'll link down in the description the Killua fights with Godspeed, Ultra Instinct for Goku, but also just some general science on reflex time, response time, and how to improve these. In fact, cognitive functions like response time are just like a muscle. You can train them and you can improve them. But one of the best ways to make a response faster is by simplifying the processing time in your brain. If you're running enough drills where you don't have to think about what you're going to do when you see a stimuli, the stimuli reaction goes straight down to the motor neurons. There's no processing involved. And so by running these drills, by acquiring targets, Targets, by shooting at things on screen, by making sure your flick shots are right on par, you're speeding up this response time. And you can gain upwards of half a second in initial aggression when you see a player enter your screen. But not only that, this will mean that you have better mouse control, so you miss less shots with higher accuracy, which means you are now even more lethal. These drills will allow you to enter into your own god speed, into your own ultra instinct, and speed up your ability to take out targets in a shooter like Apex Legends. We're going to be running these drills inside of the training map in Apex Legends. Hit play Apex and select training instead. Run through the tutorial and you'll be ready to go. So the first drill, which is probably the best to start with, is going to be a flick drill. Go here to the middle of the training map where you have three head targets on either side of you and place your cursor in between both sets. This drill will improve your left and right flick shots. This means quickly jetting your reticle over to a target either on the left or right side of where you're looking. This doesn't get talked about enough, but many people will have a weaker side to where they flick. Me, I'm right-handed and my weaker flick direction is right. I will always flick better to the left. So it's important to isolate your flick shots from left to right to make sure you can make them both equally effective. Start with your crosshair in the middle of these two sets of dummies, and you're going to be moving your reticle over to the head of the first target, then back to the middle, then over to the second, and back to the middle, and then over to the third. The reason we go back to the middle every time is you're testing a different distance 
of flicking each time. You want to train your brain to know how far you have to flick when a target is a different distance away from where your crosshair is. Run the left flick drill over and over for about a minute until you'll feel comfortable about your left flick shot. It's okay if you have to run this drill slowly at first. The whole point of this is to get your precision down. It's not to make sure you do it quickly. So if you start out going slow, that is perfectly fine. Make sure you are accurate and you will speed up the more you run this drill. Once your left flick is comfortable and you're feeling good, switch over to the right flick. Again, move over to the first head, back to the middle, to the second head, back to the middle, and to the third and back to the middle. Run this right flick for about a minute until you feel comfortable. Then you're gonna run a full minute of flicking left and then flicking right. And you wanna go back and forth until you feel like your flicks are in a good spot. If you're warmed up and you're overshooting the target, it means that you are not at the right sensitivity. Lower your sensitivity until you feel like you are not overshooting the target. There should never be a point where you overshoot what you're looking at. Same goes for undershooting. If you ever undershoot the target, which means your crosshair doesn't make it all the way there when you're intending to flick, it means your sensitivity is too low. You should raise it up. The second drill is a very important drill for mouse or, if you're on a controller, your analog stick control. This is going to be a follow drill. Head over to the side of the map to get a sharp angle on one of the moving targets up on the hill. The goal here is to keep your reticle on the very center of the target as it moves across your screen. You should have as little movement around the center of the target as possible, and it should feel very smooth. Again, this is a great time to check your sensitivity. If you overshoot your target a lot or you're jumping around erratically, again, this means your sensitivity is way too high. Bring it down. Lowering sensitivity may feel strange at first, but it's very important that you get the most accurate movement with your analog stick or your mouse. So you're just gonna be following this target left to right. Do this for about a minute, and you should feel very comfortable with the motion overall. It should feel very smooth, it should feel very fluid, and you should never feel like you're having to fight against your uh, mouse or controller to keep on the center of the target. Now, some people, when I've coached before, have said they felt their wrist getting weak or feeling of burning. This just means that you're trying really hard and it's a good sign that you're correcting behaviors you've used before to control the mouse or the, the controller. Uh, so just make sure you stay on the target. This will get easier over time. This drill is actually really important for following targets that are running across a field. Oftentimes you'll find a target that is moving in a very straight line or maybe in an arc, uh, especially if you're using a automatic weapon like the R301 or like a Spitfire. You wanna be able to, almost like a paintbrush, move your reticle across the field as they run across without missing any shots. This next drill is about target acquisition. You've warmed up your flick shot, you've got your follow movement down to a fluid level, and now you need to be able to move about and acquire targets as quickly as possible. This happens all the time. Someone surprised you from above or someone from off distance that you weren't prepared for started shooting at you. This is the moment you need to react the quickest. You need to be able to identify that target, move your reticle over to the target, and acquire it as fast as possible. And that's exactly what this drill tests. So stand at various points of the map and get different angles and use different weapons. All you're gonna be doing here is looking down at the ground or looking up at the sky and then randomly pick one of the targets on the field here and move your reticle over to it and shoot it as fast as you can. You only have to shoot it once. It doesn't really matter what target you pick, just randomly pick them as you're going along. You wanna be able to stress test various flick distances and movements. It also matters being further away from the target versus closer to the target as you will have bullet drop off, but do this for about two or three minutes. Go around shooting at random targets. If you haven't run drills like this before, you may notice that at first your movement might be very erratic. You might overshoot or undershoot constantly. You won't be able to get to the target you want. Again, if you are missing, slow down. You're looking for precision. You want to move to the target accurately, and speed will come with time. As you do these drills, you will get faster. So just run this for a couple minutes, move around the arena, get different angles, uh, get down below, start try crouching, use different weapons that have different refire rates, and get very, very comfortable with acquiring random targets out in your field of vision at different distances, away from your reticle, but also away from your character. This next drill is optional, but it's important to note because a lot of weapons in Apex Legends have pretty high recoil. 
most notably the R99, which is probably the hardest weapon to control when firing next to the Devotion. But your goal here, and you can do this for any amount of time, is to pick a target and make sure you practice controlling the fire and recoil of a weapon. The R99 is a great test case, but probably the most aggressive. I would stick to maybe the Spitfire or the R301 if you're really looking to practice fire rate, but just make sure that you understand how the recoil works for your favorite weapons and you're able to control those in combat. The last drill here is going to be a movement drill. Especially in a game like Apex Legends where you are moving around constantly, movement is paramount to your success on the battlefield. And so your goal here is to move around the arena as efficiently as possible with as few mistakes as possible. You want to be able to climb buildings, vault over walls, and land without losing any momentum or missing where you're wanting to go. It's important that you can actually move around the battlefield without making mistakes. Your movements should be precise. If you ever watched the parkour episode of The Office, this is exactly what you're looking for. Climb up areas, see what you can get on top of, and get very comfortable with how fast your character moves and what you're able to climb up on. It's also important to make sure you never run into a landing animation. If you ever fall from a very high height and you land to the ground, your landing animation is quite extensive and will slow you down a lot. You can animation cancel into a crouch, but most of the time, which is much easier, you can just go ahead and slide as you land to the ground. And be very conscious of how you're moving around the arena and what you're doing. And I would run this movement drill for as long as you want. The route isn't necessarily important. You're more just kind of parkouring around the arena, getting movement down into your head and feeling very comfortable getting around at high speeds. Hand-eye coordination is exactly what it sounds like, it is being able to see a stimuli with your eye, register that in your brain, and send a signal down to your hand to accurately respond to what you're seeing. Now, there's nothing in the world that's actually instant. Everything takes some amount of time. This includes going through a thought in your head and generating a reaction, where thinking about something can cause you to slow down. This is why we train people in emergency situations to have a predetermined reaction so that they don't have to think at all. When you're on fire, you stop, you drop, you roll. You don't even think about it because it's a trained reaction. It is muscle memory. And that's what you need to do here to be a god of aiming. You want to go faster? Train your hand-eye coordination to serve you. Run these drills every single day before you start playing. And if you ever feel like you're in a rut and you're on a losing streak, take a break, jump in training, and run it for five to 10 minutes. And it will make a world of difference. I promise you. If you like this video, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you have any questions for me, comment section or check me out on my stream. And of course, thanks for being uniquely you.